First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechah which is to say the only true names of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone, who were well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so. In effort to waking up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel and to the few sisters that watch, I'll say shalom you as well. This is your brother Farah from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai and Lord's will. This is at five. Okay. Now, you know, um, uh, like the old apostle Taha always says, man, you got to go back to the basics, okay? And, um, you know, it's pretty much a basic lace, uh, basic lesson, but it pretty much um, is the foundation, okay, uh, of our heritage, okay? And ultimately, that's uh, obedience to the Heavenly Father, okay? And the reason why is because just like, you know, a father with his uh, child that has been disobedient, Okay, what does he do? He chast he chastens him. Okay, and puts him in order. You see, but uh, what's about to happen? You know, uh, soon. You know, uh, obviously we don't know how soon, but we can tell that when it's near. Why? Because we're seeing the signs that our Lord Yahweh Shai warned us about that we will see before His return. Okay, and what is the Lord coming back to do? It ain't to hand out flowers and lilies and roses and stuff like that, okay? It's ultimately to issue out judgment, okay? And everybody's going to get a judgment or a reward, okay? Either for your wickedness or for your righteousness, okay? Plain and simple, okay? So, ultimately, as an Israelite, okay, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians, you have two choices, Okay? And those two choices are live or die. Okay? And the way to uh, life or, or life eternal, okay, is to repent. You see? But if you refuse to repent, <laughs> you shall die. Okay? And, and people say, well, we all got to die. You know, we all. Well, okay, that that is true. You know? But not in these times, okay? In this last generation, our Lord Yahweh Shah said, there be some that stand here that shall not taste of death, okay? And then speaking of who? The elect of the nation of Israel here in the last segments of the last days, you see? So something that's so blunt and so straightforward as, you know, repent or die, okay, also uh, is extremely comforting. Why? Because there's no gray area. There's no middleman. There's no, okay, no stipulations. You know, well, if I do this, then I can get exempt or I can, you know, this amendment said, no, no, no. But the Heavenly Father is, you repent or you're going to, you know, you, you're going to fight against them. Plain and simple. Okay? And that's our message. And our people, you know, they, they look at us as if, we, you know, you know, crazy, deranged, <laughs> You know, but hey, the message has been the same since the beginning, man. Okay, repent. Okay, and that message is specifically to you Israelites. Okay, these other nations, they don't even, have, and that's how you got to look at it, man. These other nations don't even have a shot. Okay, if you're not a Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitian, okay, or, uh, of the speckled bird, and when we say speckled bird, or the scriptures say speckled bird, is speaking of Israelites that have been mingled amongst other nations that look like the other nations, but their bloodline goes back to the nation of Israel. Okay, like case in point, and we always use this example: Blake Griffin, uh, basketball player. I'm, uh, I don't know if he's still playing; he may be retired. Okay, but um, he's fair skinned, you know, light. I, I would say light complected. Okay. And um, his, um, you know, uh, his mom is, is an Edomite, okay, so-called white woman. His dad is uh, uh, so-called Haitian, dark-skinned, dark-complected, uh, uh, so-called Haitian, 
you see? But Blake Griffin came out, you know, uh, fair skinned, you know, and you can tell that, you know, as the world calls it, he's mixed, but, you know, no such thing, you know, but what uh, eventually he, he, he himself married a, a so called white woman, and their child looks ultimately like an Edomite, man. Okay? Matter of fact, just to edify that point, let's show that. Hmm. <laughs> Bear with me you know, about my visual problem, so Blake Griffin, so. Images. Let me see. Let me see the sun right there. If you, if a person said, okay, he, he's white, how could you argue it? You couldn't. You see? And that's his wife right there. Okay. Uh, let me see if I see a picture of his father. Mm. Yep, see his son. That's his wife. Okay, but no, I don't see his father. But his father is, is dark complicted. Like this dude right here. No, that's Chris Paul, matter of fact. But anyway, okay, you get the gist. Matter of fact, just to, for edification's sake. Just to prove the point. Yep, you see? That's his father. And that's his mother. Look at that. You see? So you go from him to him and then to his son. You see that? Just in three generations, after two generations, he comes out looking like, like an Edomite. Okay, but guess what? He's actually an Israelite uh, from the tribe of Levi. You see, a so-called Haitian. This, this, he's a so-called Haitian. You see? <clears throat> so yeah, just to prove that point, but uh, you know, like I said, you know, the focus is that, um, you know, the focus is that it's time for repentance, man. The scriptures tell us that uh, it is high time to wake out of slumber, okay? that our salvation draws nigh. Okay? So all this, you know, uh, perception or, um, you know, and I just did a video a couple of days ago about... Um, you know, Israelites, we, we we don't have a religious freedom, okay? Why? Because first and foremost, Israelites are not religious, or it, to be an Israelite is not a religion, okay? Religion was created by man, okay, to bind people, and more specifically to bind us, okay? The Israelites, why? Because we have a zeal of the Most High, and they knew that they could control us by that, with that, okay? Basically, for in the affliction, you know? But anyway, okay, the vibration, man, okay, and, and you just look around and, and, and what's going on in the world, okay, whether it be the weather catastrophe, whether it be the division amongst people, whether it be the rumors of wars, okay, whether it be the war drums beating, whether it be uh, the acts of genocide, okay, or, or just, you know, debauchery at its highest level, the music, the, the piss poor level of the music in this world, okay, the, the, the piss poor level of food. Okay, we're at the end, you see, but the good news for the Israelites is that if you repent, the Heavenly Father will forgive you and deliver you, okay, deliver you from what? Death and destruction, okay, 
And that's why the vibration of this lesson is repent or die. Two options. Plain and simple. Okay? But uh, let's get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. What do you want? What do you want? Bear with me. Let me see. Yep, Deuteronomy 30 and 19. I believe that's where we're going to start. Let me see. Okay, we'll start here. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 18. It says, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon, upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Okay. It says, I call heaven and earth to, to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that Salakia. It says, therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You see, so obviously this was during the times of us, you know, going into the uh, the land of Israel. OK, after the exodus. OK, but the narrative never changed, man. OK, the narrative never changed. OK, choose life. OK, and that's a commandment. OK, but as we know, the scriptures tell us the majority of our people are going to choose death. OK. The majority of our people are going to choose death, okay? And, you know, here at Great Millstone, we push the vibration that, there, you know, there is no free will, okay? There is no free will, you know? And, but when you, but one will say, well, the Lord is saying choose, choose life or death, okay? Well, you know, put plainly, okay, when you go into the, 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 the you know, the definition of will or free will, okay, it's, it's basically um, you, uh, you know, formulating a thought in your mind, okay, of what you want to do or how you want things to play out and then acting upon it, okay? And then it plays out how you want. Okay, now, does that happen in certain occasions? Of course, okay? But the reality is the scriptures say man's goings are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? Okay, and also in the book of Job, it says, when man falleth upon deep sleep, upon his bed, okay, the most high programs his thoughts for what he's to do for the next day. You see? So, yeah, there may be the illusion that you're, you're, you know, you're matriculating or doing what you want to do. But ultimately, when you go into will, it means what you want your outcome to be. Okay? And the reality is nobody wants to die. You see? And if they do want to die, there's something deranged, sick and deranged about them, but most people don't want to die. Okay? But guess what? The issues of life and death belong unto the Heavenly Father. You see? So, there is no free will, but the Heavenly Father is telling the Israelites, okay, and specifically the Israelites, to choose, okay, to choose life or death, to come back to repentance, okay? Only Israelites, okay? Why? Because only the law was the law was committed only to the Israelites, okay? And let's prove that real quick. Um, let's 
prove it real quick. Bear with me. Let's prove that real quick. Bear with me. Okay. Okay, this is the book of Psalms, chapter one forty seven. Psalm chapter 147, verse 19, it says, He show up his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. You see that? It didn't mention any other nation. There are 18 nations in the world, okay? But here it's only mentioned Jacob, okay, whose name was changed to Israel, you see? It says, He show up his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Okay, so ultimately that's a you know a gift and a curse. Okay, why? Because you know the majority of our people are gonna remain under the curse, okay, and, and the heavenly father's gonna put them to death, okay? But the elect, okay, are gonna acknowledge. You know, the sacrifice of our Lord Yahweh Shah, you know, in the, the shedding of his blood, okay, and, con con and, and are going to conform, which ultimately means what? They're going to choose life, you see? And like I said, you know, our people have this notion, hey, we all got to die. Well, that ain't what the scriptures say. That ain't what the scriptures say, okay? And if you tell them that, then then they don't believe. But the reason why they won't believe is because they are not of the elect, okay? But the fact still remains. The fact still remains, okay? That if you don't repent, you will perish, okay? So let's get another piece up. This, let's go to Joshua. Let's go to Joshua. Okay, this is the book of Joshua, chapter 24. And as we read in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, you know, it was commanded of us to choose life, you see? But we all know how that turns. That turned out and will turn out, okay? This is uh, Joshua, chapter 24. Uh, Joshua 24 and 14, we get straight to the point. It says, now, therefore, fear Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. And the scriptures tell us what? To, uh, that, to, uh, uh, fear of the Most High is the beginning of knowledge. You see? So, uh, the scriptures say that, well, our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Okay? Since thou hast rejected knowledge, the Heavenly Father is going to reject you. That's what the scriptures say. Right? But, the reason they're destroyed for their lack of knowledge is because they don't fear the Heavenly Father. Okay? That is basically a prerequisite, okay, to getting the understanding of the truth, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Heavenly Father. You got to fear Him. You know? If you don't fear Him, then guess what? There's no need for Him to explain or expound on, you know, what He wants from you. Why? Because you're not going to take heed. You see? The, the, the renowned men of the scriptures will move with fear. Okay? David, uh, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Elijah, Elisha, okay? Noah, Abraham, 
Isaac, Jacob, you know, so on and so forth. These men move with fear. Okay? And that's why they were our renowned men of the scriptures. Okay? Why? Because the Heavenly Father imparted unto them supreme knowledge, right? So this is uh, Joshua 24 and 14. It says, Now therefore fear your how by Shemel shot and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of, of the flood and Egypt and serve ye Yahweh by Shemel Shai. You see? This is a commandment. And guess what? Ain't nothing new under the sun. Our people are still under that vibration, man. Okay? Are still worshiping idols. Okay? Okay? And this is, hey, we, we, you know, we've gone through the wilderness. We went through the Exodus, came out of Egypt. And Jake, and our people still worshiping idols, okay? But fast forward to 2024. So you can only imagine how angry the Heavenly Father is. And see, the majority of our people don't even know it. And it's cool, because the scriptures say what? The Lord is going to take a lot of people as a thief in the night. So a lot of our people are going to be completely oblivious to what's going to happen, to what's happening, okay? Even leading up to our, the return of our Lord, okay? World War III, food famine, okay? The implementation of the M-A-R-K of the beast, okay? Scripture say our people are going to be perplexed. And, and, and look, in the worst times in history, you don't want to be perplexed, man, okay? Meaning confused, you see? It says, uh, it says, and if, and if it seem evil unto you to serve your by Shemiah Shai, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve, whether the gods which your fathers, uh, which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of, of the Amorites in whose land ye dwelt, but as for Salakia, but as, um, let me see, Salakia, I went too far. I read that again. It says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve Yahweh by Shemal Shai, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers uh, serve that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwelt but as for me and my house we will serve you how by Shemal Shai you see so the Lord is giving you the option man okay why because he's a just power see but does that mean you have free will no okay that's you formulating a thought in your mind and say, look, I want to go to the right or I want to go to the left. OK, now, once you make that choice in your head, then the Heavenly Father directs your steps. And then here's the reality. The Heavenly Father has already predestined who is going to be righteous and who is going to be wicked and who's going to be delivered. OK. But nonetheless, most people are going to condemn themselves because although this truth has been presented to them, they're going to deny it, okay, which is ultimately sin because you're not denying us, and that's what people don't, don't understand, okay? That's what people don't understand. This ain't about us. This is about Yahweh Bashim Yahushah, okay, and salvation, okay? So let's get... uh. Bear with me. Let's get uh like I say, this is pretty basic, you know. It's pretty basic, you know. Straightforward. Hey, cause hey, we're coming into them times, man. Okay. Fun and games is over. It's time to uh It's time to come back to repentance, man. Okay? Wickedness is absolutely played out. <laughs> okay? Uh, and you can, you see what's happening to 
the so-called moguls of the black community, man, okay, uh, black culture, is being thrown in the garbage, man, and rightfully so, because it's trash, it's black, black means darkness, means void of light, void of understanding, okay, yet, you got niggas saying, I'm black and I'm proud, but anyway, it's the second Peter chapter three, Mm. Start at three, but the point is at nine. Okay, this is uh, Second Peter's chapter three. It's Second Peter chapter three, verse three. It says, "Knowing this first that." There shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And if that don't sound like a, Israel, a Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitian, I don't know what does. Okay. I can't count how many times I've heard that, you know, going, you know, having, you know, conversations, spiritual conversations with people that just saying in the know, you know, and that was early on in my walk, you know, you go to understand, hey, like the scriptures say, cast not your prayers before a swine, okay? And a lot of our people have a swine-based mentality, okay? Hey they, hey, hey, they say it, you are what you eat, right? <laughs> but no, um... You know, and that's our people, man. And they've been doing this since the beginning of the time. They did it to Noah. Okay, why is this, this this guy building a boat on land? And he's been prophesying for over 100 years saying that the Lord's going to flood this place. It's going to rain when it's never rained before. Okay? But them not understanding that, okay, the earth came from out of the waters. See, like we read about in Genesis, the first chapter. You know, the earth it was, you know, in the water, and then eventually the heavenly Father, you know, uh, you know, made the water uh, subside, and then the mountains and the earth came from out of the waters. Okay, so it was nothing for the heavenly Father to reverse that, and that's what happened during the times of the flood. You see? Okay, but let's read on. It says. It says, for this, they willingly are ignorant of that by uh, by the word of the Most High, the heavens were of old and the earth uh, standing out of the water and in the water. You see that? Like we were just saying. Okay. They, they it, willingly ignorant of it because they heard it. Okay. They knew about it. Right. Verse 6, it says, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. You see that? It says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto, unto fire against the day of judgment, and perdition of ungodly men. Right. So these things have been declared from the beginning. Like the scriptures say, the most high declared the end from the beginning. Okay. And these things have to take place. And, and, and Peter is, is voicing it right now. Okay. We're reading it. Okay. Let's read on. It says, but, okay, we read that. It says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the, is with uh, Yahweh Shai as a thousand years 
and a thousand years as one day. You see? So it ain't about our timing, okay? Time is for us. It ain't time ain't for the most high. But if you know you want to gauge it, well, one day with the Heavenly Father is a thousand years. You see? So it's his timing. That's his timing. Okay, and that's why, well, let's read it. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, right? Because, you know, they're looking at it like, well, they, they just like we just read, you know. Well, they've been saying that, you know, the, the world continue as it's been continuing, okay? Or, or they've been saying that since the, the 40s or, you know, since the days when the, the, the Messiah died, after he died, you know? And the world's still going on. Well, that's why we just read. Uh, uh, one day with the Lord is a thousand uh, a thousand years, right? It says, Yahweh Shemel Shai is not slack concerning his promise, as some... Salakia. It says, read it again. It says, Yahweh Shemel Shai is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see? And that's the point. And really, what is that all speaking of? It's speaking of the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Because, you know, and that's what's going to happen, you know. Now, some of the elect will perish for their testimony in Yahweh Shemal Shah. But it ain't really perishing, okay? It's resting and then basically getting the first, you know, first class ticket, you know, to deliverance. You see? But the key point, like, the most high ain't slack. He not, the most high is not a nigga, man. Hey, a nigga promise you something and then, you know, retract his statement or, you know, hey, what, what, what I meant was, no, that ain't the most high. The most high promise that... So, uh, 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 Sodom and Gomorrah was an example unto men if men should live ungodly. Okay? Again. So guess what? Men are ungodly. The most ungodly men have ever been in history. So guess what? He's going to destroy this place with fire, just like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? Okay, so yeah, that's it on that. I think we get one more. Close this thing up. I didn't want to make this too long, but you know the spirit going where it listens, man. So let's we'll close out with uh, the book of Acts. Okay, let's see what we want. Okay, we we'll start here, and this is you know the Apostle Paul. I at, at Thessalonica, okay, and he reads uh, Acts seventeen. Although this is not the book of uh, Thessalonians, but this is who the message was to, okay, the church at Thessalonica. This is Acts seventeen. In 23, it says, as I passed, for as I passed by and beheld your uh, your devotions, I found it, Salakia, for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God whom, there, uh, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship." Him declare I unto you. You see? 
So that's a cut to the IUIC because that's basically what they do, okay, to the unknown God, most high in Christ, bless, okay, opposed to putting a name on it, okay. But the reason they can't put a name on it is because the Heavenly Father hasn't revealed himself unto them, okay. And the blind is leading the blind, okay, although the Bishop Nathaniel, he knows better, right. But anyway, this is a whole other topic, verse 24, it says, the most high that made the worlds and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, right? So that's a cut to you Christians, okay? And you Israelite groups that say we got to have a school, this, that, and the third. That ain't, hey, we're the temple, man. It says, neither is worshipped with man's hands, uh, as uh, as though he needed any, <laughs> you feel me? It says, neither is worship with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. You see? So the Lord don't need us. Okay? We need the Lord. Right? It says, and have made of one blood all nations of men for it to dwell on all the faces of the earth Salakia. all the faces of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and bound Salakia, and bounds of their habitation And have made a, okay. No, we read that. Okay. It says that they should seek Yahweh Shemiah Shai if happily they might uh, they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. You see. So it says, uh, for in him we live. You see that? For in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own parts have said, for we are also his offspring. You see that? We're the Heavenly Father's offspring, man. Okay? And that's how you got to look at this thing, man. Okay? And, and, and really, if you fully ingest that, you're going to want to repent. Why? Because you know that you want a collision course with your father, the creator of everything. You see? And it's commanded of us to choose life. But if you choose not life, then you choose death. Ain't no gray area. Ain't nobody just going to play the fence. Okay? That's the message. It says, for as much then as we are the offspring of the Most High, we ought not to think that the Most High or the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by an art and man's device. Okay, like, right, because we don't worship idols. Okay, we worship the creator of the universe. Not, not the creation. You see? It says, In the times of this ignorance, the Most High winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. You see that? He commanded all men everywhere to repent. You see? And remember, we brought out Psalms 147. Okay, in 19 and 20. So, what is repent? To turn back from breaking the law. Okay, who was the law given to? The Israelites. Okay, matter of fact, let's prove that real quick and we'll close out with this one. We'll close out with this one. 
going to stay right down like that. Let's start here, just to get the, the gist of this. It says, and when they had, uh, this is Acts chapter 5, so like this is Acts chapter 5, verse 27. It says, and when they had brought them, um, uh, when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, As them saying, did not we straightly command ye that ye should not uh, that ye should not teach in this name? Okay, and what's the name? Yahweh Shah. You see, and that's why Yahweh Shah said you're gonna be hated for my name's sake. Okay, people don't hate you for saying Jesus. Okay, or or or, or, or Buddha or or Allah. Okay. They hate us for saying Yahweh Shah. Like Bishop Nathan said, when I hear a nigga say Yahweh, I just cringe. Yeah, because you are part of the wicked. And, and, and uh, how does the scripture say? The, the, the Most High's name is dreadful amongst the heathen. And guess what? Two-thirds of our people are heathen, okay? Especially you pseudo-Israelites, the ones that you're supposed to know this truth, okay? And, and, and continue to... Uh, uh, lead your people astray okay you're three times the heathen man because you're supposed to know better right but here we're talking about uh, uh seeing where the the apostles were being persecuted okay and they were being brought before council okay and the, the wicked scribes and pharisees and sadducees you know like this is what their gripe was it says saying did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name and behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. You see, and those were cop outs, okay? These niggas were butt hurt. They were getting cut with the scriptures, okay? And and, and people were conform, uh, converting, you know, proselytes, and people were turning back, repenting, you know? And they didn't want to lose their spot and their offices, okay? And ultimately their money and the gimmicks that they were receiving, okay? And then ultimately, that's why, you know, uh, all of the apostles, you know, were put to death. Okay, were persecuted. Our Lord Yahweh Shai was, was, was crucified. Okay. Why? Because these niggas hated the truth, man. Okay. And it's nothing new under the sun. Right. So it says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey the most high rather than men. Right. So if somebody's telling you to stop teaching in Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, you, this is what you're supposed to respond to. So, you know, if any of you among the IUIC are sincere, this is what you should be saying, man. We ought to obey the Most High rather than man. Our Lord Yahweh Shah taught us the Lord's Prayer, and it says that what? That hallowed be thy name. When you go into that word hollow, it means to be exalted, to be uplifted, to be proclaimed. His name, which we have. Okay? But anyway... You know, Peter checking them like, nah, man, we're going we gonna to say Yahweh while Yahweh's shy, okay? Because we've been commanded to. It says, the God of our fathers raised up Yahweh shy, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Okay, so validating the point we brought up, or we just, uh, you know, the precept we just read in um, in Acts the seventeenth chapter, around about the thirtieth verse, where he's calling for all men to repent. So one would say, "Oh, see, it's a call for all men to repent." Okay, all men of who? The nation of Israel. Okay, so but even amongst that, only the election will repent. Okay. Why? Because the Heavenly Father is going to put the Spirit on them to choose life and not death. Plain and simple. Okay. So yeah, just wanted to touch on that. And uh, Lord willing, it was that a fine. Kwame Yashirala, Shalom.